Assalamu alaikum and hello to my non-Muslim viewers. Today I'm just going to I'm going to be making a final video about why there's no death uh, for apostates from Islam. So here we go. Uh, for those of you who know, I made uh, a few videos, I think three videos, uh, you know, talking about apostasy in Islam and why there's no um, death for apostates. Uh, from Islam. Um, anybody who peacefully apostates from Islam, there's no death for it. Now there's one Muslim, there are two Muslim apologists that disagree and say yes, there, there, of course, you know, apostates should be killed uh, in an Islamic state. And those two Muslim apologists are uh, somebody named Bassam Zawadi and Waqar Ahmad Shima. Now, um, you know, I, I like their work and, and I like their dawah and their work and uh, you know, I like Basam Zawadi's debates and stuff like that, but this I, but this, this particular issue I completely disagree with both of them, and the reason why is because every Muslim scholar is against them, uh, and I'll be getting into that later. Now, first of all, um, what is uh, an what is an apostate? I'll just uh, refresh that uh, that term for people who don't know what that term is. An apostate is somebody who leaves a religion. For example, if somebody was a Muslim and they become an atheist or a Christian, they would be an apostate from Islam. If somebody's a Christian and they apostate from Christianity and they become atheist. Uh, or Muslim or whatever, they would be an apostate from Christianity. If someone's a Jew and he leaves Judaism and he becomes a Christian, Muslim, atheist, whatever, he would be an apostate from Judaism. So an apostate is anybody who, who leaves one religion and then joins another, whether it's a Muslim becoming an atheist, a Christian becoming a Muslim, a Muslim becoming a, a you know agnostic, whatever. So that that's basically the definition of an apostate now um uh, now now is it true that islam calls for the death for apostates uh this is false and the reason why it's false is because you have to look at the specific context in which you know those hadith arose that talk about the death for apostates uh like i said in the previous like i said in my previous video uh the context is key to understanding hadith just like context is key to understanding the bible and bible biblical verses if i take a verse out of the Bible and throw it out there and spin my own interpretations, no Jew or Christian would take me seriously. Whether it's in the Old Testament or the New Testament, they would say, well, you got to look at the context. You can't just rip things out of context, rip verses out of context, throw it out there and then spin your own interpretations. It doesn't work that way. Well, same thing with Islam. You can't just rip Quranic verses, throw it out there and spin your own interpretations. And you can't just take Hadith and throw it out there and spin your own interpretations uh, to prove well, you know, whatever you want to prove. You have to look at the uh, context in which Hadith arose so you have to look at the Quranic uh, verses in context, what, became, what came before and what came after and why those, why those verses were revealed in the first place. And you have to look at the Hadith commentaries and Quranic commentaries and, and what Muslim scholars have to say about, uh, you know, Pacific Hadith or Pacific Quranic verses. Because the Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, said, follow the uh, the the best Muslim generations would be the three generations that kind of, that come after it, and there's a Sahih, uh, there's a Sahih Bukhari hadith, and uh, the Prophet Muhammad also said, follow Muslim scholars, and this is also an authentic hadith, and the Quran says, follow Prophet Muhammad, so even Quran Quran only Muslims can't escape the Sunnah, they can't, they can't escape the Prophet Muhammad, uh, because the Quran says, follow the Prophet Muhammad, so, you know, if you're a Muslim and you believe in the Quran, you have to follow the Prophet Muhammad, there's, you have to follow his example, you have to follow the Prophet Muhammad, there's there's no way out. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a Shia Muslim, uh, you know, a submitter, a Quran-only Muslim, whatever Muslim you are. If you follow, if you follow the Quran, you have to follow the Prophet Muhammad, because the Quran says follow the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, so Sunnah or, or Sunnah, the Sunnah of the Prophet is very important in Islam. But anyways, getting back to what I was saying. Does Islam allow the death for apostates? And the answer is no, if we look at the historical context. Now, what is the historical context behind the, the Bukhari Hadith? Uh, whoever changes the Islamic religion, kill them. Uh, that, those are true hadith. I'm not. I'm not trying to deny those hadith or dismiss it. I'm just saying the reason why those, why the Prophet Muhammad said that in the first place was at a time of war. Uh, apostates back then would be spies, would be uh, you know enemies of the early Islamic state, and uh, the the only way to protect the early Islamic state would be to you know kill these apostates who who weren't just you know leaving Islam just because they didn't like Islam. They were actually posing a serious danger to the Islam, to the early Islamic state. That is a fact. Um, you know if we look at the historical context and stuff like that.
The context, the context of apostates when an apo when an apostate happened uh, back then, he would fight against the Muslims. He would be a spy. Uh, that was the norm. Uh, so that's why uh, that's why they didn't. That's why the Prophet Muhammad didn't need to clarify. He just said, you know, um, um, kill apostates because that was already the context uh, back in the day, back in back in those times. So, you know, so we have to look at the proper context. Now, what about uh, killing female apostates? Uh, I looked into that hadith, and again, that, that's a Bukhari hadith, so it's authentic. Uh, but the proper moment didn't say kill female apostates. Uh, you know, uh, other, uh, other, early, other early Muslim scholars like Ibn Omar and Zubair uh, said kill a female apostate. But that, um, that contradicts the that contradicts the Quran because or that contradicts the Prophet Muhammad because the Prophet Muhammad said uh, don't kill a woman uh, he said that in, in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Abu Dawood uh, he said this in authentically transmitted hadith so um, so that it looks like that hadith is uh, is um, th that hadith is just coming from early Muslim scholars who probably never heard what the Prophet Muhammad said, because Prophet Muhammad is the final authority uh, Muslims have to follow. If a Muslim scholar is contradicting the Prophet Muhammad's example, or or if uh, a Muslim scholar is saying something different than what the Prophet Muhammad is, what the Prophet Muhammad said, then then his opinion is to be rejected, and the Prophet Muhammad's um, you know opinion uh, or statement holds more weight. So uh, it looks like it looks like those scholars didn't didn't know what the Prophet Muhammad's Example or proper moments ruling on on women where he said don't kill women. He didn't say except you know Except a woman apostate. He didn't say that he said specifically don't kill women and children So that means you can't kill a woman. It doesn't matter if she apostates or he or is still Muslim It is authentic hadith. So anyways, um, you know getting back to uh, Getting back to apostasy, uh, you know, we have to the thing is we have to Look at the Prophet's example. We have to look at what the Prophet Muhammad did. If apostasy, if apostasy was such a sin that uh, you know it, it, it required immediate death, it doesn't matter if it was an, a peaceful apostate or a warmongering apostate, apostate who, who left Islam and joined the enemies of Islam in early Islam and started fighting against the Muslims. It doesn't matter because um, the Prophet Muhammad, because. Uh, uh, the Prophet Muhammad would have killed that apostate regardless. We read in Sunnah, Sunan Abu Dawood, Volume 5, um, Hadith number 4358, uh, page number 19. And this is a Hassan Hadith. That means it's a good Hadith according to Sheikh al Baini and according to the Sunan Abu Dawood. Uh, book translation, um, but anyways, it says that uh, there was a man named uh, Abdullah ibn Saad ibn Abi Asar who was a scribe of the Prophet Muhammad, or, or in other words, he used to write down revelations, Quranic revelations, and then he apostated and um, he, he, he left Islam and he joined the disbelievers in Mecca. And uh, when the when the messenger of Allah or the Prophet Muhammad uh, ordered uh, the Prophet Muhammad ordered that he be killed. Now the reason why the Prophet Muhammad ordered him to be killed is not just for apostasy alone. It was because he was fighting against the Muslims to begin with. He was he was instigating or he was you know doing violence against the Muslims. So that's why it wasn't just because of apostasy. But Uthman ibn Affan sought protection for him, and the messenger of Allah granted him protection. And there's a, a Hassan hadith. I mean, it's a good hadith. Uh, you know, so uh, a Hassan hadith is a step below Sa'i, but it's still authentic according to hadith uh, studies and terminologies and stuff like that. So the Prophet Muhammad, um, you know, allowed Abdullah ibn Sa'ad Abdullah ibn Sa'ad ibn Abu Sara to 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 live, even though he apostated from Islam. So if apostasy was such a big deal, or if apostasy required immediate death, then the Prophet Muhammad would have killed Abdullah ibn Sa'ad. Abdullah ibn Sa'ad ibn Abi Sar that that day he would have been like no uh, it doesn't matter about Uthman ibn Affan's uh, it doesn't uh, Uthman ibn Affan get out of the way he, he's still in the and he needs to be killed because that's the divine command of Allah or that's that's the divine command that you know you have to kill a posse but the proper moment didn't kill him uh, you know so uh, you know even if, if, if apostasy was such a big deal if apostasy required death like immediately then the prophet moment would have ignored 
uh, Uthman ibn Affan, and you would have killed Abdullah ibn Abi Zara. But he didn't. He let him live. So that means that the Prophet Muhammad was lenient, uh, or he was lenient, or he was merciful to to apostates, even when the apostates were fighting against Islam and stuff like that. Uh, now, some critics might say, well, the reason why the Prophet Muhammad allowed him to live is because Uthman ibn Affan, uh, you know, stood in the way, or he got in the way between them. Uh, but you know, my. my my response is, if, if it was divinely ordained, then the Prophet Muhammad would have ignored Uthman ibn Affan and would have killed Abdullah ibn Abisar, uh, regardless of Uthman's intercession. So, you know, the Prophet Muhammad let him go. He was lenient. And this was an apostate who fought against the Muslims. So this is, uh, and again, this is a good hadith. This is a weak hadith. Uh, now, some other some other uh, Muslims, like Waqar Ahmed, uh, like uh, Waqar Shima, the other the other Muslim apologist who believes in death from apostates, might say, well, uh, Abdullah ibn Abisar uh, converted to Islam and that day, and then he became a Muslim. But it doesn't matter because uh, Abdullah ibn Abisar still left Islam. He still like he, he apostated. He left Islam. So you know, if that was such a big, if it was such a big deal, then the Prophet would have you know killed him it doesn't matter if he converted to islam like a few hours later it doesn't matter he still left islam you know at one point of his life so if, if apostles if death for apostates was so you know was so divine it was was a divine decree or divine punishment and the prophet would have killed abdullah ibn Sa abisar like at that point it doesn't it, it doesn't matter if he converted to islam later that day or not it, why does that matter he's still he was still an apostate he still left islam so you know the prophet muhammad uh let him go he didn't he didn't do anything to him so that's that's the first piece of evidence uh the second piece of the second piece of evidence is found inside Bukhari. And Bukhari again is the most authentic book. It goes to Quran and then it goes Sayyid al Bukhari, Sayyid Muslim, and then the other Hadith collections. Uh, but, anyways, um, there was a Bedouin who came to the Prophet Muhammad and said, uh, Take my, please take my pledge uh, for Islam. So the Prophet Muhammad took his pledge uh, of allegiance for Islam. So, in other words, that, that Bedouin converted to Islam. Uh, then he came the next day with a fever and said to the Prophet, uh, cancel my pledge, but the Prophet Muhammad uh, refused. And when the Bedouin went away, uh, the Prophet said, Medina is like a pair of bellows furnace. It expels its impurities and brightens its clears its goods. And this is found in Sayyid al Bukhari, uh, hadith number 7216. And uh, you know, you can take it to the bank that this is authentic narration. Again, the hadith is found in Sayyid al Bukhari, uh, 7216, 7216. So, anyways, there was a Bedouin, he came to the Prophet, and then he wanted to apostate, he wanted to leave Islam. And, you know, the Prophet let him go. He, he, the Bedouin left Islam and he left, and the Prophet Muhammad didn't order that, you know, he be killed. So that's further proof that Islam doesn't allow the death for apostates. Now, some might say, well, the Bedouin wanted to, uh, he wanted to leave, uh, uh, he wanted to leave, uh, Medina. He didn't, you know, he, he he didn't want to leave Islam. He just wanted to leave Medina. He didn't want to go to Medina. But that, uh, but as Jamal Budwi uh, rightly points out, that that lacks any kind of uh, textual, that that lacks any kind of textual support, um, uh, you know, and. Uh, uh, you know, and there was a, and, and it's also ignored that the fact that in Ibn Hajar, and Ibn Hajar wrote a commentary on Sayyid al Bukhari, it's called Fath al Buri, uh, and Imam Nawawi, in their commentary about the Bedouin who wanted to leave Medina, said that Gari Iyad, Gari Iyad, Gari Iyad was a uh, Muslim scholar early Muslim scholar, he interpreted it as meaning that he wanted to leave Islam. So the Bedouin wanted to leave Islam. So this isn't a modernist interpretation of the Hadith. It, it's actually, you know, there, there were Muslim scholars who said that that Hadith meant that the Bedouin wanted to leave Islam. And this is, you know, not it's not only Jamal Badwi who says this, but uh, uh, Qadi Iyad who also says this. So, uh, you know, that that's further proof that, that Islam doesn't allow... Um, uh, you know, death for apostates. Now uh, you might be uh, now you might be thinking, well, what about uh, what about other Muslim scholars and, and stuff like that? Uh, what about Ali? What about Abu Bakr and stuff like that? What, what they um, 
they uh, they killed uh, they killed apostates, so they killed people who left Islam and converted to Christianity and uh, stuff like that. Well, I looked into those narrations and Abu Bakr, you know, beheading uh, or burning, sorry, burning an apost apost uh, burning people for apostating is found in Al uh, uh, Dubri, uh, the history of Al Dubri, volume ten, uh, page ninety eight through ninety nine, I think. Uh, it's found in Al Dubri, volume ten. I forgot the page number, but anyways. I don't remember the page number at the top of my head, uh, but anyways, um, uh, according to Al Dubri, Volume Ten, Abu Bakr burned apostates. So the critics say, yeah, that 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 means you can you know burn apostates or kill apostates. Well, that narration isn't authentic uh, because there's no correct chain of transmission, and uh, you know the critics are uh, citing from a weak source. Al Dubri is a weak source; it's not reliable. According to many Muslim scholars, it's not reliable. Uh, the second source would be Ali beheading uh, Rahmis, uh, a Christian, a Muslim who became a Christian, and then he was brought to Ali and he refused to convert back to Islam, so Ali chopped off his head, he, he struck his head, and uh, this is found in uh, al Dubri. Uh, and that story is also false because al Dubri is a weak source, it's not it's not an authentic source to begin with, so you know, it's, it's, not, authentic, it's not authentically uh, reported. Uh, what about the um, atheist that uh, Ali burned in Sayyid al-Bukhari? Well, if you read the Hadith commentaries like Ibn, uh, Ibn Hajar, Ibn Daymiyyah, etc., uh, etc., et according to the Hadith commentaries, uh, the reason why Ali burned those atheists or those, those apostates is because those apostates were uh, making Ali into a divine figure. They were, they were uh, divinizing. They were divinizing, or they were making Ali into a divine figure, and they were instigating, you know, uh, they were instigating violence or warmongering. So that's why Ali burned those apostates. He didn't just burn them just for, you know, um, he, he didn't just, you know, burn them just just because they were atheists or whatever. They were actually doing you know, harmful things to the early Muslim community. That's why Ali went and then burnt them, uh, you know, so it, they weren't just killed for, uh, you know, peacefully apostating, uh, you know, or being atheist or, or whatever. So, um, and that's, that's not all, uh, you know, according to, uh, that's not all, according to uh, Ibn Hazm, uh, there were scholars who took the view that an apostate is not to be killed ever. Uh, Ibn Hazm, in his book, in his book, uh, Marat, Maratib al Ijma, uh, volume volume one, page uh, one hundred and twenty-seven, says that Umar bin Khattab uh, Nakhai uh, was an early, was a very early Muslim scholar, and uh, Sufyan al Dawari. Uh, didn't believe that uh, the apostate is to be killed. So you know there there are early Muslim scholars who said that an apostate is not to be killed. Uh, Ibrahim al Nakai uh, said that um, you know an apostate is always asked to repent uh, every time he goes back to Kufr. And uh, this report is uh, narrated in Sunan al Kubra, volume eight, page three hundred and forty two. And another another piece of evidence uh, from authentic hadith collections that you cannot kill a peaceful apostate is found in Sunan Abu Dawud, Volume Four, Hadith Number Four Thousand Three Hundred and Fifty Three, Page One Hundred Twenty Six, where the Prophet Muhammad said, and I'll just read the relevant point uh, because uh, it's kind of a long hadith. Uh, I'll, I'll just read the the important part or the most relevant part he said a man uh the blood of a muslim who confesses that none has the right to be worshipped but allah and that i uh, that i am his apostle cannot be shed except in three cases in the second case he uh in the second uh, point he makes is a man who went out fighting against god and his messenger he is to be killed or, or crucified or exiled from the land so this the, that and this is a uh, fun sunan abu Dawood, volume 4 hadith number 4353 three, page 126 and this hadith is authentic so this shows that you cannot kill a peaceful apostate according to uh, according to um, you know sunan sunan abu Dawood, because you can't just uh, take one hadith and then ignore other hadith. You have to look at the complete picture. You can't just isolate hadith. You have to look at the complete uh, picture. You have, to look the, you have to look at the complete hadith and, and stuff like that.
So, um, so that 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 refutes the that that's further proof that the only time you can kill an apostate is is if the apostate is waging war or fighting against the Muslims. And this is the proper moment's own words. This isn't, you know, even Kathir, even Taimir, or any Muslim scholar. This is the proper moment's own words saying this. Uh, you know, and that's not all. Uh, the famous Maliki jurist and poet Abu al Walid al Baji, uh, who died in 1081 uh, CE, Christian era, wrote Apostasy is a sin that carries no prescribed penalty so that's you know so that's another muslim scholar who agrees that uh you know apostasy uh, carries no death penalty no prescribed penalty it means no no uh no punishment no death no death penalty or, or or anything like that so these this is further proof that you can't kill a peaceful apostate the only time you can kill an apostate is if they're waging war against the prophet muhammad in the early muslim community but you know prophet muhammad's dead he's, he's gone so you know so you know that means you can never kill an apostate because an apostate, apostate can never fight against the very early muslim community or the prophet moment because the prophet moment is dead he's gone he's not coming back so you know that's that's further proof that you can't uh, you can't kill a peaceful apostate.